Today we are focusing on the entertainment industry with an expert that looks at the zeitgeist of emerging technologies and blends a focus on strategy with pop culture. This is for any listener who wants to understand new trends, learn about the attention economy, and maybe even become famous. Here is our conversation with Simone Autera, professor in business administration and strategy at Bocconi University. Hi, Simone. Ciao, Virginia. Hello. <laughs> It's an honor. Our pleasure, as always. Welcome again to the show. Tell us a bit about your journey. Well, I always been interested when I was younger in photojournalism specifically in photo reportage. Connected to that, I always been interested in what we may refer to representations. So the representations made by media of us or the rest than us if you want. Provided that in our world, unfortunately everything is ruled by economics, it was interesting to see how the world that was interesting from a production and artistic perspective was actually completely interwoven with the economics one. And so I started diving more into the business perspective where I actually talk from right now. If there is one thing that we know about uh, the importance of our industry as much as uh, all the other industries that we are working our listeners through this podcast show is that the business side uh, is not just the numbers, but is also what is ruling the models and also sometimes can influence definitely creativity. So I think learning about economics really helps you explaining some cultural changes that you have seen in the entertainment scene. What do you think is the most interesting trend that made you click with the business and entertainment side and made you resonate a bit more with the, this kind of research of yours that you have been doing? I think that what might be particularly interesting to watch carefully at in this present moment in these industries is the role of consumers. Because on the one side, we've always been talking about consumers being active, right? Now, consumption is getting creative in the sense that it is going hand in hand with the very artistic creation we usually talk of, right? So what does it mean to consume content? What does it mean to consume a media product? And what does it mean that these users, consumers, are actually co-creating those products? So musicians who have been famous for over a decade seem to be maintaining a certain level of cultural dominance in the same way we have been seeing sequels are ruling the box office. I'm thinking about certain movies as well now, certain series, etc. What do you think accounts for this new stickness of fame and difficulty for new things to be staying power? This is a great question to start digging into the entertainment industries because uh, you talk about music, but as you said, sequels, so the movies, but it works exactly the same for book publishing, for example. It's something that is about the entertainment industries and cultural industries in general. The problem is that in our era of excess of access, in a era in which we are completely saturating our attention as consumers, the problem of discoverability of new products to watch, the problem that audience has of finding something which is worth their time is huge as compelling. So basically, as media companies, what we should need to pay attention to is to find ways to decrease search costs on consumer sides and to increase the value perception, at least that they have of the new properties we might bring to the market. So this is going to happen by leveraging on things that have proven to be successful already. Because in order to reduce the uncertainty we might have to a specific property, we might think of what we have been liking already. So if something proved to be a winner in the market, let's say Lady Gaga or let's say Thor from Marvel, this is going likely to be another winner in the future. So you extend the life cycle of these products, you build the sisters, the brothers, the hands of Thor, for example, in the market, you make Lady Gaga make movies and she's particularly good as well. We are lucky enough, but I know it's always the case. And by extending life cycle of those properties or brands like musicians, for example, that are brands on their own rather than their own content, you are going to invest in a vast array of formats or channels. So you basically build blockbusters or eats out of things that have proven successful already. Because the easiest way to convince somebody about the value of something they never heard of 
is to underlie the similarity with something that I have indeed heard of already. In terms of what you're seeing vis a bit more from the investment perspective and the overall business strategy, how do you think entertainment companies will pivot to possibly having to offer less while charging more? I think that what is uh, the very mantra of any subscription-based type of business, and it may work for newspapers as well, as you perfectly know, is uh, to desperately find ways to increase the lifetime value of your customers. And you basically either do that by asking them more in terms of the price, or you are going to find ways to keep them staying longer with you. Well, in these two different trajectories, I think we should look for solutions for the media companies, more in general, the streamers, we may say. So on the one side, diversify your product categories. For example, it comes to my mind Netflix when they decided to buy a night school production, the game studio, and they are developing right now games which are connected to the intellectual properties of their own, I think, of uh, The Queen's Gambit, for example, or Stranger Things game. So this is the very first example. You make people not only watch content, but you make people play content. And you may want to diversify not only the product category, but the genre. I mean, there was Amazon Prime, which invested, for example, in sports rights, for example, Premier League, United Kingdom only exclusivity in this matter. So not just audiovisual, but live sports content. And not only you invest again in exclusive property, but in a more, let's say, intelligent way. Say you buy catalogs. Once again, Netflix, Roald Dahl Stories Catalog, a huge, immense catalog of intellectual property rights that they are just starting leveraging on with Wes Anderson, for example. So the very idea is that you keep taking stories which are going to be exclusive to you and you develop an empire of content that is going to be diversifying the different type of product categories you have. I would be very interested in understanding, especially visa from a business student's perspective, if they want to learn more about the changes in cultural products and businesses, of course, what would you suggest that the connected fame as well as the cultural product can maintain a cultural relevance, therefore keep an LTV of the fan base that is longer than, you know, a TikTok 10 seconds dance? Okay, so from an artistic perspective is the most difficult answer to provide in the sense that uh, dealing with culture is about dealing with uh, the production of meanings, right? So how we make sense of the world we live in. Artistically, dealing with art is about providing the visibility for uh, an alternative world, the visibility of what uh, a possible other world is about. When it comes to the cultural relevance of this uh, project, it is really rooted to the capabilities and to the ability and to the sensitivity of the artist. When it comes instead on the business side, it's about good management. Good management of a specific thing, which is called catalog. Let's take the example of the music industry, right? So when we talk about uh, music or when we talk about cultural product, it is never about age. It is never about the time when they be released. It's more about the cultural value to bring with it. There is always the possibility to relate an ancient, an old production to what it is happening. Let's take the example of uh, La Peste, The Plague by Camus. I mean, it was uh, unluckily perfectly fitting, not that much what was happening medically wise, but the type of uh, buzz and mental illness that we got related to the COVID experience that unfortunately we passed. My point, from a business perspective, always try to pay attention to the externalities of content. Externalities of content are what make content relevant for people to get along together, to socialize, to make sense of the world there is in. And you need, as a manager, to look for the right catalysts of those values. It was what happened to Fleetwood Mac with Dreams, a 70s song by a guy on TikTok, made it again massively successful in terms of streaming, or it can uh, happen to Kate Bush, uh, Running Up the Hill. I mean, it was an 80s song, and we just listened to it as a new version for Stranger Things in this last series. 
if I'm an artist, most of the time I do not really study slash learn about management because I'm always going to have my manager and I'm going to have someone taking care about the numbers. I do believe that still, based on what you just said, there is a quite a valuable part of the work if also the artist will be a bit more knowledgeable about the business side. Ask Taylor Swift, <laughs> for example. I mean, exactly. she potentially wouldn't have remastered her entire first album if she were aware enough of the business trick of the industry. I mean, this is just a joke, but obviously when it comes to the sustainability of a new independent artist, I mean, artists which are not already massively represented in the market and so are not relying on the fame yet, it is fundamentally important to, you know, be aware of which are the different trade-offs that you might find yourself in. One thing that is uh, particularly interesting right now, I think, to pay attention to is the relationship with the fan base. When you are an artist, you always have to think that you need to build your audience outside any distribution platform. You need to go over different type of channels and to relate to your audience as a fan base community in order to make those people actually make the work for you. I mean, what the democratization of the production and distribution tool that the internet 2.0 made possible that costs that were only on the shoulders of the artist and better on the labels are now possibly shifting on the shoulders of those who are willing to support you as the fans. Take chance for that and try to find smart ways to connect freely to your fan bases because this might help on the one side create fame and on the other side look for uh, alternative monetization trajectories. And Simone, in such a constantly changing space as the one you're researching, how do you keep yourself at the top of the change and the waves that you're sure, seeing? Sure, sure. Well, when the price allow me that, I usually try things out because I think that whenever we are getting the customer perspective, we are grabbing the 80% of it. We then, or I then at least, go looking for insights on a specific new phenomena, new platform, new application, usually looking for for relevant specialized newsletters. I make use of newsletters on a daily basis, but as well, I collect newsletters that I know are going to be relevant when I will have to dig into a specific topic. It's a sort of preconceived storage of knowledge by publisher, which I uh, trust. So my question to you is, I am a, a younger student, very interested in the field, but I do not really know what to pick in terms of uh, things I should be focusing my studies on. Can you walk us through what you would suggest? One thing that I really believe is important to understand, strategically speaking, about entertainment industries and the culture industries in general, is that it is not just about content industries or media industries stick to sense. We need to look for adjacencies. We need to look for the complementarities to the content one. So whenever we think of offer configuration in the content business, we do not need to think that content is key full stop. Content is key, but context is even more important. So you really always need to think of, you know, content as a complement of a bunch of other things to create an experience around the content for the final users. It is a complement to hardware, to software, to telecommunication, to broadband. So if you are really interested from a business perspective to pave your path in this specific type of industries, look for adjacencies. Study content-wise, business-wise, culturally-wise, sociologically-wise, but at the same time, try to make sense of what are the industries which are involved in this business. And despite being interested in content, have literally nothing to do with content. So, Simone, you know that this talent show has something a bit unique that bring the younger people, the under 30 out there that have been taking part to the challenge as well as been interacting with the FT talent format into the show. So, we have two FT talent challengers that do have some questions for you. I will leave it to the first question by Thomas to go to you. Hi, my name is Thomas Balance and I took part in last year's FT Talent Challenge in 2021. 
I'm originally from both England and Norway, but I'm currently living in Oslo, Norway. I recently finished my MSc double degree from CBS in Copenhagen and Bocconi University in Milan, and I'm currently working as a communications consultant at Hill & Knowlton Strategies. My question for Professor Simona Autera is, if we fundamentally believe in the possibility of a democratized and interoperable metaverse challenging the walled garden business model of today, what has to change in the way these companies currently do what they do to make the transition? Thanks, and looking forward to hearing from you. Super question, Thomas. What do they have to change? Everything. Their business essence is to monetize on users' data. And what the democratization of the internet that you are referring to is uh, about uh, provide decentralizing the internet, right? So providing users the ownership of their own data. Think of biometric data, for example. This implies that these platforms need to allow for that. This implies that they need to at least uh, partially, but actually fundamentally revise their business model. This implies that on the other side, from an institutional perspective, we are in the need for a response to rule the control and to demand for accountability of what is being said, done, acted, overacted in a metaverse environment. And this as well imply what we usually used to call, and it's still never enough, media literacy, more education. I mean, what needs to change is that we need to be educated at diffuse level about the metaverse, the new universe that will be not a substitute again, but fundamentally interwoven with our. Thank you, Simone. Second question from Eleni. Hello, my name is Eleni. I was a participant of the EFT Talent Challenge in 2021 and I'm originally from Greece. I'm also currently living in Greece where I am studying for my business administration bachelor's degree and I am actively seeking for internship opportunities in the sector of fashion or entertainment. My question to Simone Otera is... What is the future of NFTs in the industry of entertainment and how will they be transforming the competition and the industry in general? Thank you so much for the opportunity and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Eleni, for your question. Well, you see it, uh, we are really talking about people that are willing to stay updated with the current trends. Metaverse NFT <laughs> side of the story. So uh, what about uh, NFT? What's particularly interesting about NFT in the entertainment industries, but more in general, I think that it reconjugates what has been lost with the streaming revolution. So the value of ownership. In this case, we are talking about digital assets. So we've been moving from ownership of a CD, for example, to paying for the access to every type of content. And we are now moving again to sort of revival of ownership, which is finalized on the one side to socially signal the participation to a community, in this case, a fan base. So in this respect is a way to monetize on your fan base because you might be willing to give a specific fan, a specific clip or stat about a tour that you made, for example. And on the other side, I mean, NFTs may stand for the possibility for a new type of ownership to make users make money on their own because it is clear that on the market right now, the most advanced people in this matter, the more nerd one, if we want, are making or starting making money out of exchanging NFTs. So it is completely opening up new opportunities on the market. This is so interesting, Simone. I cannot thank you enough for really walking us through this complicated industry. I cannot even call it industry. I think it's an aspect of humans and how we are expressing ourselves through culture and different products. And you have been really opening up so many different perspectives that I think we have so much to take away and really reflect on. So really, thank you so much to Professor Autera for being with us another time. Thanks to you, to the Financial Times uh, and to to the questions the guys posed because they were very interesting. I mean, once again, we would need an entire course <laughs> to address those. And definitely <laughs> you, if you're interested you. in the course, you know where to find the Simone because he's teaching at Bocco University. So thank you very much. Thank you, Simone, again. 
to all our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in and I can't wait to have you on our next episodes. Bye. This has been The Talent Show, which is produced by the FT Talent Team, Aya Al-Shihabi, Noor Hafez, and me, Virginia Stagni. Our podcast producer is Todd Van Leuling. Our editor and sound engineer is Arturo Ochoa. Our video producer is Enrique Zeca. And our social media producer is Letizia Clementi. Our music is by Dennis Kishuk. Check out all of the Talent Show episodes at fttalent.ft.com. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and follow FT Talent on socials for updates. Until next time and keep listening.